Paula Jo from Cedar Quilts. We've been talking about this faux flange binding off and on for a while and I just want to show you how we do it. So if you look down here, this is the faux flange binding. You've got this little lip, this little flap in with your regular binding and it just looks so cute. So you can go back and look at some of the other tutorials on how to make this two-piece bias binding and sew it together and we're going to put it on here. The back of this quilt is a busy floral but when we flip this around we're going to have a nice little solid there. And then on the front we have this solid border and we've got this busy looking little bit of the binding and then when we flip it over it's just that little tiny bit and then you get this really really pretty edge. So as we mentioned in one of the Quick Tip Tuesdays, you want to have at least, you know, a, a hand's width or so of a tail when you first start putting this on. And this, this faux flange, you actually put on from the back of the quilt, and then we're going to wrap it around. We're going to finish it by machine from the front. So when you put this on here, if you start with the wrong end, you're going to have the wrong thing flipped around. So you have to look and be careful and do a little bit of puzzling before you start. But your main fabric is going to be the, the narrower piece, and you're not going to see it when you're first sewing this on from the back. The main part you're going to see is the accent part. And um, so when we, when we start on this, we're going to be sewing it with about a quarter inch. I like my quarter inch foot, so it helps keep me evenly at that distance from the edge. And then after that is sewn, and you want to do just a little strip first and then check. When you fold this over and then you fold it over again, you need enough so you can stitch there. And then when we stitch it on afterwards with the when we're finishing it, we're going to be stitching it this way. When you stitch in that ditch, you don't want the stitches to be in the binding here. You want it to be in the ditch here or onto the quilt back, such as this. There's just a little bit of a stitch line they're showing from the back, and that's fine. If you are doing this for the quilt police or the 4-H judges, then you want to keep adjusting things so that you get that backside stitch right in the ditch. But if you're not doing it where someone's going to be judging you negatively, this is just fine. This one's for my mama and she loves me no matter what, so she's going to be fine with it. So anyway, I have attached this on almost all of the quilt and actually I've finished the, the top stitching on most of it as well but I left a little bit of it so I can show you some things. So we're gonna go up here to this last corner and I'm gonna tuck my extra back into my laundry basket that we talked about on another Quick Tip Tuesday so that it stays out of the way and the dust bunnies don't get at it. All right, so basically you're putting this on just like you would any other binding. You're coming down along the edge here at about a quarter inch from the edge. And when we get close to this corner, there are a couple of tricks. First of all, when you get really close to this edge, I want you to imagine that there's a line splitting here at a 45 degree angle. Okay, and when you get down here, you want to stop where you're in the corner of that, about a quarter inch from the bottom, and you want to stop with your needle down right there, and now we're going to turn, and we're going to stitch right off the corner, because when you do this, it holds it in place better than a pin. And now when we cut the thread, I want you to look at this. Can you see that? We stitched down and we came off the, the corner and now that's going to make it much easier for you to flip this and make your miter. So, and I'll show you that again here in a little bit, but once you get that corner stitched, now we're just going to flip this away so that we make a straight line with the rest of the quilt and that, and then we're going to fold it down and now you make the square 
See, and then you've got this little fold-up flap here. Okay, this is how we make a nice mitered edge. And now we're gonna stitch a couple, just a couple here. Alrighty, and then we're gonna straighten things out. So now we have turned the corner, and now we're just gonna finish putting our binding on. And like I said, I like this quarter inch foot because it gives me a side wall to keep everything lined up nicely. I do not like my binding folded and pressed in half before I sew it. I like mine pressed just flat and open and then I can control the fold lines while I'm working with it when I'm stitching it on. And then when I am done stitching it on, and we'll show this to you here in just a moment, we're going to press it around to the front side. So now we've got, all right, I'm going to sew till it's right about here, about a hand's width away from the starting end. And then we're going to cut that off and show you how we match up our ends. Okay. Now, this is really cool. Okay, so here's our starting end. And here's our finishing end. And basically what we're going to do is we're just going to line this up along the edge of the quilt and kind of open it up. And then we're bringing this one up nicely. And we're just going to mark where this overlaps. And now this is a heat erasable friction marker. Okay, so you can see that little line there. And then we are going to line this up on our on our cutting board. There's all kinds of different ways you can cut this at a nice perfect diagonal. I have a line on my mat or you could use your your ruler and cut it but I am cutting it off at exactly where it meets up. This is bias binding so it has a little bit of stretch to it. I've got oh you know about three hand widths here as long as you have at least two hand widths here, this works really, really, really nicely. But this is matched up perfectly. We're going to sew those two ends together, and you will not be able to tell where we started and stopped with this. And then we'll cut that. Okay, so now we want to make sure that we don't have these twisted, okay? You want to make sure it's laying flat, and this one's laying flat, and we're just going to match these up. And we're going to sew these, again, with just a nice little regular quarter-inch seam like we always do with quilting. We're going to sew this with just a regular quarter-inch seam. We're going to take just a couple of stitches in here, and then I've got mine on hover mode, which means my needle goes down and the foot goes up. Then I can straighten everything out here and then continue on. There we go. And then when we take this out of here, that's all pieced together beautifully. We're just going to finger press this open. And now this is absolutely magical, but it all matches up perfectly. Ta-da! I love that. It's amazing every time. 
All right, and now we're going to go back here and we're going to finish sewing the binding on. And what I do is I kind of find the halfway, oh, I forgot to put my needle down. We're going to take just a couple of stitches and let it sit there. And then we're going to find the halfway point here and hold that. All righty. Now, when we get close to the end, we just try to match up our starting and stopping lines. And oh, I'm going to actually stitch over this a little bit because I was practicing at the beginning, just like I told you to, with how wide or how narrow I wanted that first little bit of stitching to do. And so I want to wait till I meet up with where my practicing was good. There, okay, that's where I'm happy with the start again. And now we're going to go iron this, and I'll show you a couple more secrets. All right, we are going to be pressing this now before we bring it around and, and finish it. So I like to do this from the side where this, where you can still see the stitching and stuff. And basically, we're just going to fold this over. And we want to make this as nice and flat and wrinkle-free as possible. And we just keep pressing it with our hand a little bit first and then with the iron until we get right into the corner there and then come around the corner. And again, just keep pressing that open so that we've got a nice fold away from the seam. And let's push up onto this corner here a little bit further. And again, we're just going to push that all nice and flat and press it. There we go. And now we're going to flip it over the other way. And we're going to press it again from the right side. Now, that's already pulled away nicely from the back side. We're just going to bring it over. And with my thumb, I'm pushing the, the quilt flat. And with my finger, I'm bringing the binding over. And we're just going to press that into place nicely. And then we're going to miter the corner. OK. We're going to do that up here to the corner. And I already had part of that end pressed already. Just want to ease that into place there. And now depending on if I was going to be hand binding this or if I was going to be machine binding this, that helps me decide which way I'm going to have this corner going. If I was machine, if I was stitching this by hand, I come this way when I'm stitching. I make that corner and then I fold this down and then I go this way. Um, if I was sewing by machine, I might want it the other way, but I have to just stop and think and plan and figure and puzzle a little bit which way am I coming. With the machine stitching, I'm going to be coming in the stitch this way. So, oh, you know what? Actually, it's going to be exactly the same way that I would do it if I was hand stitching. We're going to do the corner the same way here, but see how that makes a nice little mitered corner? We're going to press that down so that it's easy when we're stitching it by machine. If I do the binding for you, if you have me machine quilt your quilt and I attach the binding for you, this is what I do. I always attach it and I fold it and I, I press it and fold it and, and then I press in that miter for you so that when you do your hand stitching, it's easy to do that. Now, if you like to come the other way around, you can easily flip that the other way, but it just makes binding so much easier when it's already pressed. All right, now that we have everything pressed into place nicely, we are going to change feet again. So I was sewing the binding on with a quarter inch foot with a little sidewall. And now I'm going to be using a specialty foot. This is really cool. Um, where are you gonna be able to see this the best? This has a little lip in the center on the bottom. And there's a little can you see that all right? And there's a little wiggle 
to it there where the needle goes. And it is a really nice foot for being able to stitch in the ditch. I don't know what the name of this one is, but I always call it my ditch stitcher. So I put that little rudder right in the seam where I want to be sewing. And I'm gonna move that needle over just a tad. And we're gonna take a few stitches here. Oh yeah, beautiful. And then I'm gonna come right into the corner and we're gonna turn it. And again, I'm in hover mode so that my needle stays down when my foot comes up. And then we're gonna go again and hopefully I got that perfect in there. And then we're gonna stitch. And can you see that nice little corner there? And then we just stitch along in the ditch. And you can see how it stitches just perfectly in there. You won't see it, and then that little flange will flip up nicely, but it's just so cool. Okay, now when we get to the corner again, I want the edge that I'm sewing on to be on top. I want the corner where, after we turn the corner, to be down first, and then this one over the top. That way when we get to the corner here, the foot is gonna come up over the top and it's not gonna flip up, flip up the bottom edge there. And we're gonna take one more stitch and then we're gonna turn the corner. That looks perfect. If it doesn't, we'll go back and we'll just top stitch that corner a little bit more if we need to. Hopefully it's perfect already. But isn't that so pretty how it stitches in the ditch so nicely? I still sew this fairly slowly and carefully, but it's still way faster than doing a blind hem stitch by hand. So I can take the time to be careful stitching in the ditch on this with the machine because it's still way faster than doing this all by hand. But most of the time I finish most of my binding by hand. But then I'm sewing it from the front, flipping around to the back and then stitching around the back by hand. finish, that faux flange finish all done, and it looks gorgeous. So, I hope you had fun with that like I did, and give it a try, and send me some pictures of your projects. Thanks so much. Toodaloo. <laughs>